Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today I want to talk about tortoise switch machines. How I go about preparing them in advance so all the wiring is done and they're ready to be installed. It makes it a lot easier if you have to swap one out in the middle of a busy operating session. So hang around and we'll get started. Okay, I've gone ahead and zoomed in on the workbench so we can go ahead and uh, do the project I have lined up for today. Basically, preparing your tortoise switch machines so they're ready for installation. And I do this with uh, several of these in advance. I also keep them around in case I need to swamp something out during an operating session or while I'm running trains if one of these fails. And to be honest with you, tortoises can fail. They have little wipers inside here that uh, will break loose eventually, and when they go, they go. So you do have to uh, be prepared uh, to replace them and repair them. And maybe in the future I'll do a video on how to take one of these apart and fix it. But for now though, what I want to show you is um, how I I prepare these in advance. And it's fairly straightforward, but I wrote an article that will appear in the uh, March 2020 model railroader. And in that, I uh, talked about how to do this and promised to uh, provide a video uh, showing how it, how it uh, goes about. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, the first thing I want to point out is that there are uh, several little metal traces here that your wires uh, have to be attached to. And uh, the two on the outside provide power uh, to the tortoise switch machine motor itself. And then there's three here that uh, provide uh, power and uh, connections to a, uh, a single pole double throw switch. And then there's another three here on this side that do the same thing. So you have in effect a double pole double throw switch built in to the tortoise switch machine. And you can use that. I, I use the um, one of these uh, sets of switches to control the polarity of the frogs on my turnouts so that when the uh, switch uh, changes position, the polarity of the frog is automatically set so that you won't get any shorts. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Now, one of the problems that I, I pointed out in the article with this is these little metal uh, circuit uh, traces here are attached with adhesive to this uh, phenolic uh, board. And the, if you overheat these while you're soldering to it, it can uh, cause the uh, circuit trace to lift. And particularly once you install a, um, a wire on here, the pressure of the flexing of the wire can also cause this to separate. So there's a couple of things that you can do to prevent this from happening. One is not to overheat the uh, circuit while you're doing the work. The other, I'll show you in a second here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, now, if you notice, on these uh, switch machine circuits, they have a series of holes drilled through the back of the board here, and they come through here on the face, through the middle of each one of these traces. That's there to allow you to attach a wire and to run the wire through it. Now, it's very important that when you do that, that you run the wire through from the back to the front, bend it over, and then solder it to the circuit trace here. That will prevent any stress and strain from lifting this uh, uh, trace, this little metal trace, off of the board itself. So, what I do here, I have a, uh, a little drill, pistol grip drill, it's a Black & Decker, with a 1 16th inch bit in it. And it's very simple. Uh, you want to s drill through the existing hole and enlarge it so that the wire will go through quite easily. Um, I find that the wire, ho the holes that are provided just aren't large enough. And also it's important to start on the metal side and drill through that way. Because if you come in from the back, when you come through, you run the risk of pushing the metal uh, trace off of the board itself. And you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill through here. Uh, 
Just takes a second for each one. Okay. And we'll go ahead and do the other uh, power trace here. And then I then go ahead and do the three traces uh, for the first of the uh, switches that I'm going to use to control the frog polarity. I don't do anything with the other one because I don't typically use it for anything. It's there as a backup in case the, uh, the wipers, the pickup wipers on the inside fail and I can easily swap it. Okay, got that one. And finally, you get to see this in real time here. <laughs> Boring as it may be. Okay, let me pull that one out. <sighs> okay, so you can see we've got some nice open holes uh, here in the circuit uh, traces that the wires can go through. And I'm going to run them in through the back. Now, what I like to do in advance, I've already uh, pre-cut uh, several lengths of wire. There's uh, five, obviously, for the five traces that we're going to use. And I've gone ahead and I've tinned most of them with solder. I've got one more to do. So let's go ahead and we'll uh, go ahead and get that tinned. And then we'll be ready for some soldering. Um, let me go ahead and get this. done. Now, one thing you do want to do uh, before you do your tinning, go ahead and give the wire a twist or two so that you get a good smooth finish there. And uh, that way it will fit easily through these holes. Okay, what I want to do then is show you, I'm going to start with the black one. I always set these up the same way. And I'm going to run it through from, from the back here. As you can see, it goes in. And then I'm going to push it over. Just bend it over with my thumbnail. You can use a screwdriver or whatever. But go ahead and bend it over so that it's laying down flush against that uh, solder, tr against that uh, trace. Okay? And then we'll go ahead and get the uh, solder pulled up so I can do this with uh, just the two hands that I was born with. And Pinch that down good and tight. And then I'm going to just solder that tray, that uh, wire here real quickly. And because I pre-tinned it, the solder is, soldering job is done almost instantaneously. So there's um, very little heat that is applied to the uh, circuit trace. Then afterwards, I just go ahead and pull this out straight, okay? So, by running it up through and bending it over, it reduces any strain uh, or stress that might be placed on the circuit trace if it were just soldered to the outside like this. And I've had a number, that I used to do it just like this, and I'm sure a lot of people do, but um, after a while, these things tend to lift off of the board and it comes to be a problem because then you have to try to solder way up here and it just doesn't work as well. Whereas if you do it this way, uh, like I've shown, you just run the uh, wire up from behind and then bend it over like so and it's ready for you to solder it. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more of these. Um, okay. And we'll get a little bit there, and it only takes a second. And you can see it's got a good solid joint there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the rest of these. Okay, I've got them ready to be soldered now, and I'll just go ahead and there's the green one, the yellow, and the red. All of those are now soldered. Hold them on there a second. And I'm going to add a little bit more to this white one. It didn't have quite as much solder as I would like. 
Okay, so that one's in there good and tight. So, as you can see, I now have everything set up. My black and my white power wires going to the tortoise motor, and the red, yellow, and green going uh, to my uh, to my uh, frog. And at this point, this tortoise is now ready. I've already installed the wire here uh, that runs through the uh, bottom of the layout and throws the points, and screwed that down nice and tight. So it moves quite nicely. Now one thing that I want to point out, on the bottom here of this this little guy, this thing that slides up and down, allows you to control the length of the throw. So you can adjust it either way uh, you want to, a, to get a good throw. You want to have one where it moves it and holds it in tension without putting a lot of excess pressure. So this allows you to uh, control that and adjust for various thicknesses under of your layout itself. Also, one little thing. I always used to wonder which side of this goes up and which goes down. Uh, for one thing, you can easily tell on the, the bottom of this, uh, the holes are rounded, whereas here they're flat, flush, and small. So, this is the bottom side. This is what you want, the, the one with the uh, rounded openings, and that makes it easier to get the wire up through here. If you try to feed the wire up through these tiny little holes, it's a pain in the neck to do, let me tell you. So that's a little tip that I discovered a few years ago when I was playing with these and trying to figure out the best way to install them. And, you know, there's a little kink here in the wire. That is shown in the, uh, in the diagram that comes with these. It's important to put that in because that controls whether or not the wire is going to be straight coming through or is going to be angled. And you want it to go up straight. And if you give it that little kink that they show you in the diagram for installation, uh, it does allow that to, to go up pretty straight through the hole uh, and into the points themselves. So those are just a, a couple of installation tips from uh, things that I've discovered over the years. Um, other than that, it's a fairly straightforward procedure. Okay, so once I've got the this, this switch machine wired and ready, what do I do as far as installing them? Well, there's a couple of options. If you've already installed uh, your feeder wires uh, under the layout for each of these that you want to connect to, then it's a simple matter to use one of these suitcase connectors. This is a quick splice. It's sold by All Electronics at allelectronics.com and look for quick splice. And this is for 18 to 22 gauge wire. And all you have to do is slip it in here like this, and the other wire would go in like that, that you're connecting to. And then you just crimp down, and you've got a connection. It's that straightforward. So it's very quick if you need to swap out one of these things during an operating session. Okay, these are called a T-tap, and they work like a suitcase connector. You would simply place this one across the wire, the bus wire, or whatever wire you want to connect to, and crimp it down, and then install one of these uh, male connectors here on the end of the wire that you want to connect to it. And then it simply slides in an opening on the side and makes a quick connection. So that's another way uh, to, to go about making these uh, quick connections under the layout. And I showed how to use these and the T-taps in another video that I did on using suitcase connectors for doing uh, layout wiring. And I'll put a direct link uh, to that uh, above my head here. So at this point, this one is made up, ready to go, and any time that I have a failure on the layout, or if I just need to grab a tortoise and install it, it's all ready. No problems at all. It only takes a few minutes up front. Pre-cut your wires, pre tin them, drill your holes, and you're done. Well, you got to do some soldering, of course. But go ahead, drill your holes, install your wires, solder them down, and you're done. Well, I hope those tips will get you started on preparing all of your tortoise switch machines for installation on your layout. It only takes a, a few minutes uh, to prepare these in advance, but it makes installation a whole lot easier, especially if you've got a bunch of guys standing around waiting for an operating session to continue because 
your tortoise crapped out on you. So that's it for today. Come on back for more videos on the DCC guy.